to mark the 50th anniversary of the establishment of diplomatic relations between India and Vietnam and on the eve of 132nd birth anniversary of President Ho Chi Minh, Indo-Vietnam Solidarity Committee organized a national seminar on Ho Chi Minh and India on 14 May 2022 at National Library. The day started with Vietnam Ambassador H. E. Mr. Pham San Chau and his team members offering floral tribute at the bust of Ho Chi Minh situated at the crossing of Jawaharlal Nehru Road and Ho Chi Minh Sarni at 9 a.m. where children greeted them by waving Indian and Vietnamese national flags. The place echoed with slogans of solidarity between India and Vietnam besides the resounding of long live comrade Ho Chi Minh. This was attended by the members of Indo-Vietnam Solidarity Committee and Ms. Susmita Vattacharji, the local councillor. The renovated plaque at the entry point of Ho Chi Minh Sarni was inaugurated at 9.30 a.m. Vietnamese team in the leadership of Mr. Chau visited the officials of the National Library at 10 a.m. followed by a visit to the Vietnam corner in the library. At 10.30 a.m., a documentary in Ho Chi Minh was played to give the audience a broader view of Ho Chi Minh's ideas and ideology. The seminar started at 11 a.m., which was being broadcast live. It commenced with lighting the ceremonial lamp and the welcome address by Ms. Kusum Jain. Addressing the seminar, His Excellency Mr. Pham San Chau, the ambassador of SR Vietnam, expressed his pleasure for National Library being the venue of the seminar as there could be no better place than that to widespread Uncle Ho's ideas and ideals. He said that Indo-Vietnam relations date back to 2,600 years when Buddhism had traveled from India to Vietnam. The relations between our two countries are not based on economy alone. Our relations are people to people and heart to heart. Soft powers like Buddhism, yoga, culture, traditional medicine and literature are the similarities that have brought us together. Dr. Tilottama Mukherjee, Assistant Professor Sama Prasad College, in her keynote address, gave a broad overview of India-Vietnam relations and the excellent fraternal ties shared by Prime Minister Nehru and President Ho Chi Minh. She discussed in detail the most important recent developments between our two countries. Professor Tridip Chakraborty, Professor of Emeritus at Amas University, in his address mentioned Ho Chi Minh as one of the greatest revolutionary figures of the century and was a conscious environmentalist who had accepted Gandhi as his political ideal. He also mentioned about the important role India had played for the national reconstruction of Vietnam. Mr. Gautam Dei, former regional director ICCR Kolkata, in his address focused on the need of Uncle Ho's ideals in today's world. He said that Lenin was a revolutionary and Gandhi followed non-violence while Ho followed some qualities of both the leaders and so Ho Chi Minh's ideology is very much relevant today. Mr. Amitabh Chakraborty, a renowned poet and activist in his address, mentioned Uncle Ho as a saint politician. He remembered the struggle of Ho Chi Minh to liberate his country along with its unification and appreciated his war strategies of changing the mind of the captured American soldiers through conversation. Mr. Mohammed Salim, Secretary CPIM West Bengal, in his presidential address, said that Ho Chi Minh's importance was there, still is, and will always be there. Stressing on strengthening our bilateral relationship, he said that India and Vietnam's relationship does not need any third party's intervention as it is based purely on the basis of our two civilizations. Dr. Prabhame Samantrai presented a brief of the seminar followed by a formal vote of thanks by Mr. Prem Kapoor. In the evening, a felicitation was organized in the honor of the ambassador of SR Vietnam, Mr. Pham San Chau, at the office of Indo-Vietnam Solidarity Committee. The members of the committee welcomed the delegation with Tilak and sang folk songs and songs on Ho Chi Minh and presented dance performances in their honor. The, to strengthen our friendship, they tied the friendship band on their hands and exchanged gifts as a token of love. It was attended by Mr. Bivek Gupta, MLA, Mr. Mahesh Sharma, Councillor KMC. They stressed the need to develop closure relations between India and Vietnam. On this occasion, His Excellency Mr. Pham San Chau felt happy to observe that the legacy of Indo-Vietnam relations was not confined among the older generation and was being carried over by the younger generation, which according to him was a welcoming sign. He expressed the hope that in the coming days, Indo-Vietnam relations would further grow from strength to strength. Both the delegation and the members of the committee became so engrossed with emotions and the informality of the program that everyone sang a chorus on Ho Chi Minh at the end to show our solid solidarity. 
Those who participated in the felicitation included Mr. Prem Kapoor, Ms. Kusum Jain, Dr. Prabhame Samantrai, Mr. Arvind Kori, Mr. Bhimal Sarma, Mr. Amit Sharma, Mr. Siddharth Mishra, and many more. Thank you.
birth anniversary is on 19th May and we are organizing this seminar in his honor. <coughs> he has played a key role for the Vietnamese independence and the unification of the nation. He also contributed notably in developing co close relations between India and Vietnam. And in his honor, we are organizing this seminar. We have His Excellency Mr. Pham uh, San Chao, the ambassador of uh, Vietnam in India, is with us. And uh, so I, I would request all the dignitaries present here to begin the program with the lighting of the Holy Lamb. Yes, I request His Excellency and uh, Muhammad Salim, sir, and all the reverend present here to uh, Gautam Da and everyone. Dothan Hai and Mr. Prem Kapoor, of course, Kusum Jain, to holy, light the holy lamp. It's the holy light that, in fact, eradicates the darkness. When darkness comes, let us not condemn the dark, but light a lamp to illuminate. And uh, a little bit of light pushes away a lot of darkness. And I hope this holy lamp in its lighting will bless this occasion and will help to pervade the ideas and ideals of Ho Chi Minh. And we, in fact, are in dire necessity of his beliefs in this darkness that's prevailed around the world. So I hope the flames of the holy light will bless us to spread a brotherlyhood that will help us to tie our hand, to tie our heart, be friendly, and love each other. I thank you everyone to and I would like, like welcome all the guests present with us and, and to do this honor I would like to request uh, Kusum Jain to present a welcome address. Welcome. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. He is my friend <laughs> and brother. Thank you, Mr. Hai. Your Excellency, Pham San Chao, respected Sri Muhammad Salim Saab, respected Gautam Da, dear brother Hai, Tridiv Da, Amitabh Da, Prem Kapoor, and uh, Consul General of um, India, Vietnam, Vietnam in yeah. Mumbai. Mumbai. He has all the way come from Mumbai for this program, especially for this program. So we welcome you here. A special welcome to you also. And what to say? Here in this August gathering, today, intellectuals, activists, uh, writers, poets, and many literary, literary name who I can't name everybody because they love Vietnam and our organization so much. Amlesh da is there, Amitabh da. So, uh, so very welcome all distinguished guests here today. Very, very warm good morning to all of you. So for us, but this is very sorry time. For us, imagining a program, imagining a program without our mentor, Gitesh Sharma ji, is very hard and painful. It is big vacuum and a void. He was the one who motivated, guided, and inspired us to read about Ho Chi Minh and Vietnam. Our heartfelt salute to him and his untiring spirit. On behalf of Indo-Vietnam, Solidarity Committee, we from the bottom of our hearts welcome His Excellency 
and other officials of the embassy for kindly visiting Kolkata and inaugurating our seminar on Ho Chi Minh and India, making this seminar a very, very special, important, and meaningful. Almost 2,000 years ago, there was a meeting of minds, a beating together of hearts, a spiritual union which bound the people of India, Vietnam, and other neighboring countries, which continues to flourish with time, even today. In modern times, this friendship is being nurtured and promoted by both the governments of India and Vietnam and marching towards stronger ties through many strategic uh, commitments and people's diplomacy. President Ho formulated, President Ho formulated the concept of people's diplomacy and created a people-centric diplomatic front. We, with great pride, say that Indo-Vietnam Solidarity Committee, since its inception during the liberation war of Vietnam, played a very vital role through people-to-people -people relations. People-to-people -people relations are no less important than economic and defense ones. So Your Excellency, this is great, great moment and historical moment for us. We, there are two, three things which I want to mention here in Calcutta. People are so energetic and so, uh, so much interested in Vietnam. So if there is a Ho Chi Minh chair in any university or a language in any university, here most of the people, students especially, they will join and learn Vietnamese language so that, because nowadays business from Vietnam and India growing faster and we need the uh, translator who can speak Vietnamese and English both. So this is very important point. Uh, I would like to mention for you to please go with the, our, convey this to the higher authorities in Vietnam. And number, uh, one more important thing which I would like to very, uh, very in, importantly uh, make your attention on that, that in Calcutta, because Calcutta is a city, once upon a time it was called uh, Vietnam, Vietnam during the Liberation War, and three, four people have given their life for Vietnam during the Liberation in 1947. So, and Ho Chi Minh, met that, uh, who was, uh, met the one of the left boy and especially went to his home. So Calcutta is a place where people has given the name of the Harringerton Street, where the Ho Chi Minh, uh, where the American consulate is there. People of Calcutta has given the name to that uh, Harringerton Street to Ho Chi Minh Sarani. This is the Calcutta. So we very much, very much like that there should be a, a trade and council office, cultural center in Calcutta, but run by only Vietnamese people. Only Vietnamese people. Original not, oh Yes, original, not, not by any honor, honorary person. <laughs> that is our holding hand request to you, sir. So I will not take much of your time, sir. And um, uh, just, I will conclude. Not at the cost yes, of Mumbai. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> and, and you know, I conclude uh, with the words used by President Ho Chi Minh during his state visit to India, during his state visit to India in 1958, when he was giving farewell to, from Calcutta, because he flight, he fly from Calcutta to Rangoon. Yes. Yes. So that time when he was giving goodbye to our uh, Calcuttan uh, friends, he told, he departing from Calcutta, Rangoon, he, he told, long live the unshakable, the long live unshakable friendship between India and Vietnam. And we continue this spirit, friends, and we 
all need your support, cooperation in making this friendship more and more stronger and like that. So thank you. Uh, I don't know. Thank you. Oh, thank you all. Thank you all. Thank you. Thank you, Kusum Jain. And now it's the honor to uh, present a bouquet to all the guests to present with us. And I would like to request uh, the little girl, Prerna, to help with us and uh, to provide the bouquets to do the first honor. I would like to request uh, uh, Kusum Jain to do this honor and uh, offer the bouquet to the ambassador of Vietnam and India, Mr. Pham San Chau. Thank you. And to do the next honor, I would like to request Mr. Prem Kapoor to present the bouquet to Mohammed Salim, Secretary of CPIM, West Bengal State Committee. Thank you very much. And next, we have the cue to felicitate Mr. Gautam De, former regional director, ICCR Kolkata. And to do this honor, I would like to request Aarti Singh. Aarti Ji, are you there? Yes, I request Aarti Singh to felicitate Mr. Gautam De. Oh, she has been, uh, he has been felicitated. Thank you very much. That's a big honor. Thank you. Next, to do this honor, I would like to request uh, Arbin Kori and to present the bouquet to uh, Dr. Do Than Hai. Okay, I now like to request Aarti to present the bouquet to Mr. Dothan Hai. That's a beautiful scene. Thank you very much. And now I'd like to request Arvind to do this honor, next honor, and he would like to uh, pre present the bouquet to Professor Tridev Chakraborty. So we have a uh, name, an eminent person present with us, Mr. Huang Tung. And we will present a bouquet to him from our side. Okay, so... So we have the special guest, uh, Mr. Ho Ang Toon, Consul General of Vietnam and Mumbai and India. I would like to request Arbin to present the bouquet to him. Arbin, a very dedicated young member of our committee, and he is presenting the bouquet to Mr. Ho Ang Toon. And he, he directly came here from Mumbai, and I really appreciate his kind gesture of being with us here. Thank you very much. And um, I would like to request uh, Paridhi Dube. Is she with us? Paridhi, to do this honor and to present the bouquet to Dr. Tilottama Mukherjee, Assistant Professor, Sama Prashad Mukherjee College. She is going to present the keynote address today. And I like to request Paridhi to present the bouquet to Professor Tilottama. Beautiful. And next, uh, I would like to request uh, Raj Mitholia, Mr. Raj Mitholia, to present the bouquet to Mr. Amitabh Chakraborty. He is a poet and activist. Um, I request Raj Mitholia ji to present the bouquet to Mr. Amitabh Chakraborty. He is a um, poet and a social and cultural activist. We have already did this honor. Thank you very much for... Yes, everyone has been honored. And thank you very much for this concern, for reminding me whether I'm uh, forgot or not. Thank you, everyone. And uh, here is the time to, to release the book. Confluence of Literature, India and Vietnam. And um, I request Parna to bring, uh, okay. I request everyone to release the book. The book is, uh, the name is Confluence of Literature, India and Vietnam. This was the last dream project of Gitesh Sharma. He in fact edited, before the sad demise, he in fact edited the book. And um, this is posthumously published, and this is a dream project. He worked tirelessly. This is confluence of literature. We have in one side Vietnamese uh, literature, and in one side um, Indian literature. That's in English. And um, uh, all these editors, Kusum Jain and Prem Kapoor, they have worked tirelessly to. They have worked tirelessly to do the translation and. Uh, to, to, to make this book a successful um, one and to make it reach to the people. I hope Giteshi, if he could be there, he would be very happy that 
we also uh, tried our best to make uh, this uh, book uh, available. Yes, this is, uh, of course, this is first of his kind. This was his last dream project. And uh, thank you, everyone. Now uh, it's time to listen to that eminent figure present with us, inaugural address by Honorable Ambassador, Mr. Farm San Chao. I request him to address this gathering. A very, very warm and good morning to all brother and sister of Vietnam here in Calcutta. Uh, dear Ms. Kumar Jain, uh, Chairwoman of Indo-Vietnam Solidarity Committee, Dear Mr. Salim, a former minister, former MP, secretary of CPM uh, State Committee of West Bengal. Uh, dear Mr. Gautam uh, uh, Day, former director of ICCR. Uh, oh dear old friends and member of the India-Vietnam Solidarity Committee. Dear old friends uh, who are present at this seminar today. I am very, very moved and touched to see so many familiar faces which are so lovable, which are so close to the Vietnamese people present at this important seminar. Let me, on behalf of my government, my people, express a very sincere thanks to each and every one of you who spare your precious time of a Saturday morning to be here with us. We can normally use for family get together, for friends to get together, and you abandon that habit in order to come here and to join us, to join the committee to celebrate one important event of Vietnam. So we all become one family. Thank you very much. Because this is all together, is we are one family. Dear member of this big family of Vietnam, this week we started a whole week of celebration leading towards the birth anniversary of our late President Ho Chi Minh that we all know. On the 19th, uh, we are going to celebrate his birthday. And across the world, we have different places. We start different celebrations. And the fact that we have chosen Calcutta, we have chosen India, we have chosen Calcutta, and we have chosen this venue, the National Library, which is the guardian of wisdom of the world, to celebrate this event is so meaningful. And the fact that the Embassy of Vietnam teamed up with the Indo-Vietnam Solidarity Committee, which is the, one of the oldest solidarity of Vietnam across the world to mark the event is also very, very meaningful. And you just saw for the first time, what we call the premiere of the clip about India and Ho Chi Minh. That is the clip. I'm sorry I was not being able to be with you because I was with the management of the library. But that is also the first time. So you see that, and we come here with a big delegation coming from my, uh, not only from the embassy in New Delhi, from our consul, gen uh, our consul general in Mumbai, but also, we also have people coming from Ho Chi Minh City. We also have the in-laws of Vietnam. We have the friends of Vietnam. We have also the special friend from Cuba, the deputy ambassador of Cuba. Yeah, he come all the way here to attend this event. You see that, and especially I moved to sit next to our very, very dear friend. Because thanks to this government, it was in 1977 to until 2011 yes. that the booth of Ho Chi Minh was installed. Yes. 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 Without that government, we cannot install the booth. Yes. 
Jyoti Buso was there. So this is a moment that all the forces get together to think and to discuss of a person who has a very strong passion, feelings to the people and the country of India. President Ho Chi Minh visited India three times. He doesn't have many countries where he visits so many times. And interestingly, when he comes to India, you see on the film, he is very humble. And I believe that one of the biggest similarities between leaders of India and President of Ho Chi Minh lies in the fact that they are very, very humble people. The way they dress, the way they talk to the people, they are not far away from the people. So they are very close. We have the feeling that they are part of your family. Yes. That is one of the value that I think that unite our two nations. And this is also one of the things that we need to learn from him more and more. Sometimes I come, I, my background is Europe. I was two time ambassador in France and Belgium. And I study all my way in the Netherlands and uh, in Switzerland, in Norway. And when I come to India, I think that, I think that perhaps, I'm sorry, I, I, because I put this because of the official photo this morning. Otherwise, I will put a more humble tenure. I, I will put a Nehru West a jacket, which I normally do. Yes, so I think that's gradually this is also make us because this when I wear this I think I'm a little bit far from my two neighbor here brothers here, <laughs> so this also what we learn, and I also very, very very touched to see that one of the characteristic of the relationship between India and Vietnam is number one not economic relationship first. It is not defense relation first, like Vietnam and former Soviet Union, no. It's not uh, investors and buyers like Vietnam and some Northeast countries now. No. The first, when you talk about that relationship, is the people to people. It's the heart from one heart to the other heart. And that people to people exchange and heart to heart diplomacy dated back more than 2,600 years. How do you know? Because 2,600 years ago, our merchants start doing business with each other. And thanks to that merchant, thanks to that this, uh, I mean, exchange commercially, for the first time, Buddhism start pressing, spreading from India to Vietnam. And it's become now, we become now part of what we call Buddhist civilization. And I know that at the moment, India relies a lot on its soft power and the, what is the component of soft power of India? Number one is Buddhism. Number two is yoga. Number three is Ayurveda, all the traditional medicines. Number four is Indian diaspora. And what you see, and number five is Indian influence, culture, as put it here. I mean, it's the... Uh, influence of culture of Indian. And if you look at Vietnam, you see the presence of all these elements. You see there Buddhism, which is almost a national, like a national religion. You see yoga people practice every day. You see mm, traditional medicine. Yes. You see veg restaurant of India across Vietnam. You see Linga restoration project in Vietnam. So all these bound us together. 
And that is the reason I want to stress that the biggest strength of the relations between India and Vietnam lies in the diversity, lies in the richness between our two people, between the heart from come, that comes from the heart, one heart to the another heart. So that is our, not our, our treasury, not only our treasury, it is our access so that we can build a more prosperous future. As the second characteristic of the relations between India and Vietnam is the closeness and the first leaders of India, then Mahatma Gandhi, although he has never met Mahatma Gandhi, but the correspondent, and secondly, Jawan Nehru. I found out a very interesting resolution, which was adopted by UNESCO in 1987. In that resolution, we uh, in our resolution, they honor Vietnam President Ho Chi Minh. And in that President Ho Chi Minh, in the same page, they honor Jawa Haknan Nehru. And few people know about that fact. Yes, yes, it's the same resolution. And Jawa Nehru is just only one year older than President Ho Chi Minh. And they, uh, and they passed three years before the demise of President Ho Chi Minh. So it means that, and he's the first dignitary who visited Vietnam when the northern part of Vietnam was liberated in October 1954. So all this, I think here you believe in karma, right? So our two nations have a predestined, yes, I mean, um, history. Yes, so I just want to, I don't want to dominate the seminar because I want to respect the intervention of many famous uh, and notorious speakers. I want to stop here. I want to say that. I want to thank the people, the government, the past and current government of West Bengal for allowing this workshop to be here. I thank each and every of you for coming up to warm up the, the, the relationship between India and Vietnam. I'm particularly touched to see in every faces present here, not only the wisdom of an aged person, but also the smile of a young generation. And this morning, I also saw the cheer of all the small children. So you see that three generation in one together devoted to this beautiful relationship between and Vietnam and India. I want to say that I believe nowhere, nowhere in this world can beat the people and the land of West Bengal for the love that there is for Vietnam. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Your Excellency. That was indeed a heart-touching uh, address. It's now time to listen to the keynote address uh, that's going to be presented by Dr. Tilottama Mukherjee, Assistant Professor and Head of Political Science Department, Sama Prashad Mukherjee College. Dr. Tilottama. Thank you, Prabha. A very good morning to the August gathering here, celebrating the 50th anniversary of the establishment of Vietnam-India diplomatic relations and the 132nd birth anniversary of President Ho Chi Minh. I thank profusely the Embassy of the Socialist Republic of Vietnam in India and the Indo-Vietnam Solidarity Committee Kolkata for bestowing upon me the honor to deliver the keynote address today. We hereby begin the deliberations of the day by dedicating it in loving memory of late Sri Gite Sharmaji, our mentor and strengths behind everything we do. Ho Chi Minh visited India three times, first in 1911, then in 1946, while he was going to France for peace dialogues, and then finally in 1958 as an official visit as the President of the Democratic Republic of Vietnam. Prime Minister Nehru welcomed him as a great revolutionary leader. He further remarked that we have met a person who is part of Asian history. We meet such a great man 
and we meet a period of history. Therefore, we not only enrich our thoughts, but also feel more honored. Meeting President Pope is such an experience. However brief, a mention must also be made of the fact that India was the chairman of the International Commission for Supervision and Control, which was formed pursuant to the Geneva Accords to facilitate the peace process in Vietnam after the first Indochina War. A new nation that was India supported Vietnam's independence from France, viewing it as being similar to India's own struggle against British imperialism. The then Prime Minister of India, Jawaharlal Nehru, embarked on a tour of China and Indochina in 1954, during which he visited North and South Vietnam. He was one of the first visitors to North Vietnam after its first victory against the French and at Dien Nguyen Phu. Nehru sent a detailed report describing his tour to Burmese Prime Minister U Nu on 16th November 1954. He wrote, The person who impressed me most was Dr. Ho Chi Minh of the Democratic Republic of Vietnam, who came to see me at Hanoi. Hanoi had passed into his hands just five days previous to my arrival. This was a peaceful and very disciplined transfer from the French to Viet Minh. Dr. Ho Chi Minh impressed me as an unusually frank, straightforward, and likable person. Although he was engaged in a war for seven years against the French, he was the very reverse of a warlike person. He struck me as a man of peace and goodwill. He didn't say a word against the French to me. It was evident that Viet Minh was well organized and disciplined. At that time, despite the fact that India was the chairman of the International Commission of Control and Supervision, which demanded strict impartiality in dealing with North and South Vietnam for implementing the peace process. India seemed ideologically clearly tilted in favor of Viet Minh and President Ho Chi Minh. India established consular relations with North Vietnam in as early as 1956. The charisma of President Ho Chi Minh was such that he was accepted and loved and respected as one of our own and the cause of Vietnamese people and their struggles were ours. This is why when President Ho Chi Minh visited India in February 1958 to further bolster their bilateral ties to enhance the solidarity among countries in Asia and Africa for the purpose of defending world peace, Mrs. Rameshwari Nehru, the chairman of the President Ho Chi Minh Reception Committee, remarked, You are loved and respected by us, sir, the citizens of India, as much as by your own people. Such was the influence of President Ho Chi Minh on Indians that demonstrations in favor of Vietnam and even accessories such as sandals and shirts would bear the pictures of President Ho Chi Minh. Such was, was, such was his popularity here with no other similar instance that can be cited when compared with any other leader of the world at any point of time in global history. President Ho Chi Minh's and Vietnam's conviviality with India intensified even further when Mrs. Indira Gandhi came to power. During her visit to Soviet Union in July 1966, she became extremely vocal about US bombing in Vietnam. Few years later, after the heroic victory of Bangladesh Liberation War, Mrs. Gandhi visited Moscow in 1971. There she pledged India's support and commitment to fight for the inalienable rights of all peoples, especially those of Vietnamese people, for national independence and freedom. On 26th April 1972, Mr. Swaran Singh declared in Lok Sabha that the liberation of Bangladesh was a great heroic event. The liberation of Vietnam will be an equally heroic and great event. India wholeheartedly welcomed the Paris Peace Accord, which was signed on 27th January 1973, for the purpose of reunification of the two Vietnams, North and South. With the defeat of West in Saigon and the completion of reunification of Vietnam in January 1976 and the creation of the Socialist Republic of Vietnam, Mrs. Gandhi retorted in these words that the West had not been able to assess the power of nationalism even were forced to yield to it. Therefore, President Ho Chi Minh and Vietnam was very close to India and the leadership didn't hesitate even to invite the wrath of the US at a time when the Cold War was at its peak for the sake of expressing a rare solidarity as two Asian countries 
sharing very old civilizational linkages and ideological affinities. Though both Chacha Nehru and Uncle Ho passed away in the 1960s, the foundation on which they had established Indo-Vietnam relations was laden with honest fraternal feelings and a strong commitment for future joint endeavors to bring in peace and prosperity for its peoples. Vietnam supports India's plea for permanent membership in the United Nations Security Council. Vietnam understood that in 1998, when India had to go the nuclear way, there were obviously good reasons for it. And at a time when the world put sanctions on Vietnam, on India, Vietnam stood by India. Vietnam understands India's border dispute with China, as Vietnam itself was a victim of Chinese aggressiveness and unfounded claims on its own borders. On matters of terrorism too, Vietnam unequivocally supports India's zero-tolerance policy at a time when India is surrounded by neighbors who are known to harbor terrorists on their soil to sabotage India's peace and growth story. As we all know, the China was vetoing time and again India's bid at the United Nations to list Park-based Maulana Masood Azhar, chief of Jaish-e Mohammed, as a global terrorist, from openly condemning the Mumbai attacks to extending cooperation, working, and anti-terrorism initiatives, Vietnam has been a steadfast partner of India in this regard too. India and Vietnam share similar apprehensions and ramifications of being lower riparian countries of Brahmaputra and Mekong respectively and have voiced concerns globally about China's rampant dam building activities in the upper streams. India is involved in the exploration activities in the South China Sea at the behest of good friend Vietnam, much to the chagrin of the PRC. And both India and Vietnam support free and open Indo-Pacific with freedom of navigation and overflight during the East Sea and Asia-Pacific debate and turning it into a stable, corporate and developed region. Vietnam understands India's apprehensions about China's Belt and Road Initiative and its reservations about an opposition to the China-Pakistan Economic Corridor, which is an integral part of the Belt and Road Initiative. Furthermore, the Quadrilateral Security Dialogue, or the Quad, comprising US, Japan, and Australia, and India, which is playing an instrumental role of cooperation in the Asia-Pacific region, is actively supported by Vietnam to the extent of being called a shadow member of Vietnam's. Vietnam supports India, India's Project Mossum and Vision Sagar, which envisage to deepen connectivity of India with other littorals in the Indian Ocean region and are pet projects of the present government. Vietnam has participated in the Mila Naval exercises in 2010 and 2018 in the Indian Ocean. In May 2018, India and Vietnam conducted their first ever joint naval exercise. During the period 2016 to 2021, there have been seven high-level visits between Vietnam and India. This is the highest number of visits by Vietnam with any other country in the world during this period. In 2016, Vietnam's relations with India were elevated to the level of comprehensive strategic partnership from strategic partnership. For the first time in the history of India-Vietnam relations, a Vietnamese ship participated in the International Fleet Review at Visakhapatnam in February 2016. In that year, both in Vietnam and India wholeheartedly welcomed a tribunal ruling of the Permanent Court of Ar Arbitration which rejected China's nine-dash line historical claims in the South China Sea. In 2017, India and Vietnam celebrated the Year of Friendship to mark the 45th anniversary of the establishment of their diplomatic relations. In 2018, Vietnamese Prime Minister Nguyen Xuan Phuc visited India, and their Delhi Declaration committed them to work closely together in common regional and international security issues of mutual concern and ensure an open, transparent, inclusive, and rules-based regional architecture through ASEAN-led frameworks like ADM plus ARF, EAS, PMC plus one, etc. President Trandai Swang visited India in March 2018 and especially urged the Indian companies to avail of the opportunities in the continental shelf, exclusive economic zones, midstream and downstream sectors, renewable energy and energy conservation projects in Vietnam. In August 2018, the third Indian Ocean Conference was held in Hanoi, and the external affairs minister of India laid 
Srimati Shushma Swaraj attended the conference and stated that we intend to accelerate the establishment of direct shipping routes between the seaports of India and Vietnam. We agreed on the importance of the early conclusion of an ASEAN-India Maritime Transport Cooperation Agreement. India and Vietnam are connected not only by common waters that wash our shores, but also by a shared vision for peace and prosperity. After assuming office as the President of India, Sri Ramnath Kovind chose Vietnam for his first official visit to any Southeast Asian country in 2018. In 2019, Vietnam published a defense white paper giving out a strong message without naming any country about the activities in the East Sea. India supported such a stance by Vietnam as she herself believed that China had a major role to play behind Nepal publishing a new map in 2020, claiming parts of Uttarakhand in India as their territories. The new emerging areas of cooperation between India and Vietnam are science and technology, human resource development, cooperation between Indian Space Research Organization and Vietnam's National Remote Sensing Department, nuclear cooperation, shared vision in line with India's Indo-Pacific Oceans Initiative, and the ASEAN's outlook on Indo-Pacific to achieve shared security, prosperity, and growth. In December 2020, the Indian Navy took part in the passage exercise with the Vietnamese Navy in the South China Sea, a very bold gesture indeed. India's economic relations with Vietnam at the present state needs immediate focus. In April to January 2021-22 period, India's total trade with Vietnam was 11,331.15 US million dollars, and the balance of trade was negative for India to the tune of 191.29 US million dollars. This is the first time in modern recorded history that India is facing a negative balance of trade with Vietnam. According to the United Nations Development Program, Vietnam has created a legendary story in poverty reduction with the Human Development Index of 0.63 in 2019, ranking it 118th out of 189 highest HID growth grantees in the world. According to United Nations Sustainable Development Report 2020, Vietnam is the only Southeast Asian country to achieve UN action targets and recorded a positive economic growth even during the peak of COVID. To conclude, I would like to say that the past of India-Vietnam relations was determined by people-to-people -people contact, solidarity, similar views on all the issues, and the future of India-Vietnam relations will also be singularly determined by people-to-people -people contacts. India is well aware of it and therefore offers Vietnamese a host of scholarships such as under Indian Technical and Economic Cooperation Program, Civilian and Technical Cooperation Scheme of Colombo Plan, ICCR Scholarships, Education Exchange Programs, Cultural Exchange Programs, Mekong Gongwa Cooperation Scheme, Buddh Scholarships for Buddhist and Sanskrit Studies, etc. During COVID, Indian Navy ship delivered oxygen and oxygen concentrators for Vietnamese people. Such solidarity, fraternal ties, along with deepening of their economic relations, and ensuring timely implementation of the grants in aid and lines of credit that have been announced in various sectors hold the key to a future of prosperous Indo-Vietnam relations. Thank you. Very comprehensive. Thank you. Thank you very much, Professor Tilatama, for refreshing our memory from our traditional relations to the recent uh, developments that we achieved uh, in the COVID times. Thank you very much for refreshing our, our relationship. Yes, that's a subject. See, it's a research scholar, and she has, she had done her PhD on Indo-Vietnam uh, and China relationship. And that's how we are expecting this expertise from her. Thank you very much. <laughs> and uh, now it's time to, to listen to... Um, uh, listen, our guest speaker present with us, uh, Professor Tridev uh, Chakraborty. He is a professor of emeritus in uh, Adamas University, and I request uh, Professor Tridev Chakraborty to address the gathering. Okay. Can you hear me? Yes. Yeah. Yes, sir. Yeah. So thank you very much for giving me a chance to this August gathering, and I'm really honored 
and I should not concentrate on India Vietnam relation. I have to concentrate on some other parts of Ho Chi Minh because Ho Chi Minh is my uh, political ideology. I, I believe that Ho Chi Minh lifestyle is attracted me, his simple life which attracted me, which is very similar to Mahatma Gandhi. So that is the reason that I'm a follower of Ho Chi Minh. Now, Ho Chi Minh, <coughs> I, there are a number of fake names, actually, the Vanwa, Naguang Tan, Naguang Ali Kwak Lan, Lu Thun Thuy, Duang Naguang Lai, Nam Song. These are the names. When Ho Chi Minh was in Comintern, he went to Comintern, he was a direct <coughs> disciple of M.N. Roy. He was the most successful leader of the Vietnamese independence struggle. And he fought against the French, American, and the puppet Saigon government. And one of the greatest revolutionary figure of the centuries, not of 20th century, it's for centuries. Now, President Ho Chi Minh was not only an initiator, but also the shining exemplary model in the practice of patriotic stimulation. That has strongly encouraged the people to emulate in all aspects of social life, creating great strength to the whole party, people and army, to overcome difficulties and hardship and lead our revolution to the victory. So that was the Ho Chi Minh. Now, he was a follower of Bolshevik revolution, <coughs> next to Lenin. And he was enormously a pragmatic communist, a doer rather than a theoretician. He wrote in 1959, that was, which was published in 1959 in the selected, collected works of Ho Chi Minh, and which was published by Nandan in 1960, where he wholeheartedly expressed his mental affiliation of Lenin and the Third Communist International. Ho Chi Minh never defamed by any, anyone, like the Stalin was condemned, the Mao Zedong was condemned, but Ho Chi Minh was never condemned. And Ho Chi Minh, if you visit Ho Chi Minh, the, in Vietnam, you will find in every institution, every building, there is a Ho Chi Minh is there. Ho Chi Minh is standing there, and he is controlling from there. That look, don't say anything. I, I am here. So that was the Ho Chi Minh, actually. He was a conscious environmentalist, which I consider because in his will, he wrote, I'm quoting the line, not only in cremation good for from the point of view of hygiene, but it also saves farmland. When I am gone, the grand funeral should be avoided in order not to waste the people's time and money. This is the mindset of the Ho Chi Minh. Yeah, yeah, yes, yes. That is the thing. That is the, he is the number one environmentalist. Now, coming to India, since Tilakthama have uh, said a lot of things I should not elaborate since time is there is a paucity of time. He visited thrice, and what India did, I can consider, because I have done my PhD on Vietnam. <clears throat> the point is that when the USA withdraw, before they withdraw, they have destroyed the fertility of the soil. And Indira Gandhi sent Shamin Nathan how to recultivate the land. And I'm mentioning this point because in 19... 78, India had supplied wheat to Vietnam. And in 1988 or 89, if I'm not wrong, the Vietnam is supplying rice. That is Vietnam. That is the unity. That is the strength of the entire Vietnam. Now, point is that there is no such interaction with Gandhi. Ho Chi Minh doesn't have any interaction with Gandhi. But we have a lot of interaction now with Nehru. But I can mention one important point. Ho Chi Minh at one point of time, someone asked in 1958 when he visited India, someone said, the Udu Kanli says something about Gandhi. Ho Chi Minh immediately reacted and he said, Gandhi is my guru. Gandhi is my political guru. Because these things are available in the archive. You know, nowadays nobody is interested to go in archive to read Ho Chi Minh lot of works. These are the things are going on. But, and I can mention another occasion that in 1948, after the assassination of Mahatma Gandhi, 
being an admirer of the great leader, Ho Chi Minh described the death of Gandhi is not only a national disaster, <coughs> but an international tragedy. And in his tribute message, he said, I and others may be revolutionaries, but we are disciple of Mahatma Gandhi, directly or indirectly, nothing more, nothing less. Here I'm mentioning because one book had came out from Vietnam. I think Kushumji know it very well. That, that uh, there I have written one article on Gandhi and Ho Chi Minh. Because their line is thinking, but there is a convergence. That yes. convergence, well, the convergence line lies. Of line of thinking, but there is a convergence of Ho Chi Minh and uh, Gandhi's viewpoint. Now, <clears throat> Ho Chi Minh actually is a household name. I will take two or three minutes. Huh? I will, Ho Chi Minh is a household name. Amannam, Tomannam, Vietnam, Vietnam. This is the slogan you will find. I have visited Vietnam many times. I have seen whenever I'm meeting in Vietnam, any common people walking in the street, you are from which country? India. Oh, India. They are very proud of India. Yes. Even if when the Vietnam delegation came to my university, my previous university in Jadapur, the, 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 someone went to market, wanted to buy some mangoes. Yeah. So that says, he's from Bondo. You are from Vrindo. Vietnam, Meranam, Teranam, Vietnam, Vietnam. This is the feeling. This is the feeling of the Buddha countries, actually. This is actually, we have chanted. Now, Ho Chi Minh actually have a lot of interaction with Jawaharlal Nehru. That was the thing. I will take two or three minutes. So I should not cite the poetry that was, I am struggling, you are active, you are in jail, I am in prison. From China. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. He is writing, actually. In 1943, it was written, actually. Now, here I have to mention two important things. I think you have to you know personally, all of you know, Amen Roy, yes. the Narendranath Bhattacharya, actually, he was an art communist. But he wrote a book, Men I Met. This is a rare book. There he described number of personalities he met at the Comintern time, and there, he have written something on Ho Chi Minh. That is a very unique thing. Like he have written something on Gandhi. So Amen Rai, I'm citing one line from that men I met, an uncompromising revolutionary acting in the field of commander on orders of the general staff of the International Army of the Communist World Revolution. And he further wrote, it has been said that strategically Indochina is the way of Southeast Asia. Ho Chi Minh certainly holds the key to it. He is a man of destiny, but it is the destiny not only of Southeast Asia, but maybe of other Asiatic peoples also. This is the Amenda. He was a critic because in the latter years he changed. He was a very critic of communism, and he formed the radical humanism. But he said something on Ho Chi Minh because he was a teacher of Ho Chi Minh in the Comintern days. Now, there are a number of other scholars, they have mentioned Ho Chi Minh, like Jean Leconte. In 1969, he described Ho Chi Minh more of a nationalist than a communist, because in our subject, there was a debate going on whether the Vietnam is a nationalist movement or a communist movement. It is essentially a nationalist movement under the leadership of communists. He was essentially a communist, but he mobilized the Indian masses, uh, sorry, the Vietnamese masses against the uprising, against the colonial power. William Dwecker, I met him in Moscow before the fall of Moscow. He wrote a book, Ho Chi Minh Our Life, which was published in 2000. There he said, the Ho Chi Minh is half Lenin and half Gandhi. Now, coming to other point, there were a number of attempts were made by the Western media to condemn Ho Chi Minh. Number of books. There's a book written by Sophie Quinn in judge. The name of the book is Ho Chi Minh, The Missing Years, 1919 to 1939. Fortunately, I have reviewed that book, which was published from Singapore. I have vehemently condemned, because she tried to prove through this archival document that Ho Chi Minh was not the real leader. So there I have mentioned that all archival documents are not always authentic. I have condemned that one. 
So that book was published and which is available in the internet. So let me, since the time, there is a paucity of time. I can say that India is a real friend of Vietnam. Real friend. Real friend I can say because when Vietnam applied for membership, UN, which country objected? USA. India have played a very important role. There USA have placed the issue of Korea. Korea should be a member, South Korea, not, uh, uh, sorry, South Korea. India have pleaded for that. India have played an important role for the, when Vietnam has actually inherited the war shattered economy. It, India played a very important role, very important role for the national reconstruction of Vietnam. And that's why I consider it's a model of South-South cooperation. So let me to conclude, because I should not take too much time. We would like to conclude with a question. Was Ho a nationalist? First, communist. Second, a nationalist dressed in red or a communist dressed in white. Vietnam is serving uniquely the interest of the Vietnam and the Vietnamese people or a Comintern clique always placing the interest of the international communist movement and the cause of the world revolution first. Actually, Ho Chi Minh was Ho Chi Minh. No one can compare Ho Chi Minh with any important leader. Thank you very much. Thank you, Professor Chakraborty. Uh, there was indeed uh, some piece of new information, I think, uh, that would have appeased the um, audience present here. Thank you. And now it's time uh, to listen our guest speaker, Mr. Gautam Dey. He's a former director of ICCR Kolkata, and I request Gautam Da to address the gathering. His Excellency, Mr. Fan San Chao, Ambassador of Republic of Vietnam, Mr. Mohammed Salim, a veteran communist leader. I should not confine his name only saying that he's the state secretary of CPIM. Very seasoned politicians, my dear friends, Kushum Ji, respected Prem Ji, Amitabha Ji, Prabha, Amalajda, Zarina, so many known faces are here. I think I want to say a lot of things because the research made by my friend Tilatama has given a comprehensive account of uh, Ho Chi Minh and Professor Tidip Chakraborty who specialized on Ho Chi Minh. I have nothing to say, frankly, because it will be repeated and wasting of time. Uh, the thing is that before I start my small speech, we're all here, here only because of Gitesh Sharma ji, because he's the man who really laid the foundation of the unique relation between these two countries, away from Delhi. And one thing, though it is very not liked by my communist leader, he told me that we should, we should have followed the path of Ho Chi Minh rather than Lelin and Maoist. That is the way way he talked to me because he thought himself as a Ho Chi Minh. Not only his, his figure, features, and what he preached and also practiced in his life. That is very much important. Though it is a debatable uh, question whether we should, uh, should follow the path of Ho Chi Minh or not. Because he com many people he compromised with the Americans because he is a forgetting uh, attitude. He had no hatred against the <coughs> French government, despite the so much violence and art and mayhem that took place at the time. The one thing is very certain that the relationship between India and Vietnam is extremely solid, cordial, and reciprocal. That is the most important thing. And William Duque has said that he was half Lenin, half Gandhi. It's a very unique, I think, description he said about Ho Chi Minh. 
because Lenin was a revolution leader and Mahatma Gandhi adopted non-violence. But what is more important that what attracted Ho Chi Minh, the simplicity and morality of Mahatma Gandhi. That is the key to any kind of human being. You have a simplicity and you have the morality and principle. You can overcome and solve any problem. You have the determination, you have the simplicity, you have the morality, which is very much lacking in, in India also among the politicians. So therefore, I believe that Ho Chi Minh is still very much relevant. And I don't want to quote all these things because he has told so many visits about Jawaharlal Nehru and what he told about Ho Chi Minh. The only thing I want to quote about the Amrita Pritam yes. poem, The Monk King, I think. Because I honestly, I should not be the same thing saying that what Jawaharlal Nehru said about all these things and waste of time. Because Amrita was very much influenced by the, uh, his simplicity, his honesty, and his complete dedication. Uh, that, that I will, the Among King. Who is this king? Who is this saint? The one has removed the throne from his life side. From the land of Vietnam, today a wind has come to us who dried the tears from the eyes of my history. There was but a beat of night left when something, a dream, came to land in the fields of the sky, someone who showed the sun on the stem of autumn today, the flowers have taken their rose slaps. What words are these that humanity's love have written? So that is that Amrita Pritam has a great profound respect for Ho Chi Minh. I don't want to elaborate my talk unnecessarily because the same thing will happen than this thing. And one thing is certain, People of Calcutta have a special regard for Ho Chi Minh and the people of Vietnam. Tumannam, Amannam, Vietnam still reverberates and echoes in the streets of Calcutta. So, sir, we are all here with you. And if you specially allocate one scholarship, particularly from Bengal, for study of the philosophy and principle of Ho Chi Minh, in any of the reputed university in your country. I think that will be a great thing. I think that is very much uh, important. And it will also strain the relation between the two countries, particularly with reference to Bengal. I think that is very much important. With this word, I conclude my speech. Thank you. Thank you very much, Gautam Da. He speaks less, but these are not words. These are emotions. It just plays with emotion, and that touches the heart. Thank you very much uh, for this, for, for minding. This is most beautiful. We told him to speak less. Yes, that, that is his signature style. He never speaks more. He just uh, wants, he just know how to bind the attention of the people. He speaks less, but catches the attention of everyone. Thank you very much. Uh, now I would like to request uh, Mr. Omitava Chakravarti to address the gathering. He's a poet and a cultural and social activist. Chair of my honored guests, my previous speakers have already spoken elaborately, elaborately on the subject. Today we are commemorating the birth anniversary of Comrade Ho Chi Minh, who was lovingly called across the world Uncle Ho. He was such a politician, practically he was a saint politician.
coefficient uncomparable unparalleled among the world statesmen in our adolescent youth time we have gone through his biography and it was the peak moment of the reunification struggle of two parts of Vietnam. We all know that in one part, north of Vietnam, it was under President Ho Chi Minh's rule. He was the supreme of that part. And the other part, south, It was ruled by the, first it was French back, back rule and thereafter US back rule. And his task was very tough to rule one country and to start the process to reunite the country fighting the enemy forces. So, in both sides, he performed competently. It was recorded in history. His life, which I already told earlier, <coughs> that as president, as the head of the state, he was very much firm, rock-like firmness we have seen in his administration to fight out the enemy, to chalk out the worst strategy when he had a competent general, Gia, world famous general, who drove away the mighty French imperialism in the tough war of Dien Bien Phu. But Ho Chi Minh was also a war strategist. So, in the height of wars, the brutality of American soldiers, we all know, the worst sufferer was the Vietnamese common people and the wrath of Vietnamese people against the Americans was very much justified. But President Ho Chi Minh is even like He ordered, he instructed the prison officials to treat the Americans who were already captured humanly, most humanly. Not only giving instruction, orders as a head of the state, he remained idle. He himself visited the prisons frequently and not depending on the prison officials for implementing his order to treat the enemy soldiers most humanely, he even asked the prisoners personally how they, are, they were being treated. It was the treatment of Comrade Ho Chi Minh. On the one side, he was firm like rock as a statesman, dealing with the enemies. On the other hand, most humanly with the enemy soldiers. This is the rare quality, 
rarest quality. So, I will not talk in details. Everybody knows, especially of our generations, what happened in Vietnam and what was the role at that point of time, particularly in Kolkata. It was agog among the all cities of our country, mainly led by the left forces, mainly in Kolkata and West Bengal. Also, there are democratic forces supported this movement, no doubt. But the leading part taken by the left forces, they have dominated the scenario with the slogan, Amar Nam Tomar Nam Vietnam Vietnam. So, concluding my speech, I will only tell that a long 47 years have already passed after the reunification. So, it should be our duty to take pledge in the coming days to make awareness to the coming generations so that our golden past can be preserved in the coming days. With this, thank you all. Thank you very much, Gautam Da. As, uh, Amita Hoda. I'm extremely sorry. Thank you very much, Amita Hoda. And um, now it's time to listen to the presidential address the pre from the president who is presiding over the meeting, Mohammed Salim. And I would like to say that he's with us in our most shaking period that we are facing after the sad demise of Giteshi. He's playing a kind of father figure standing with us, helping with us morally. And I appreciate that I could visualize Giteji sitting at the middle of the uh, session with the same kind of kurta. So thank you very much for fulfilling the gap. I somehow visualize his figure behind the kurta that you are in. Thank you very much. And it's time to, it's time to listen Mohammed Salim. Thank you, Dr. Prabhami. Samitre. And when she took this responsibility to conduct this discussion, it's less burdensome for the president, for the chairman. I'm so grateful to you. And comparing me with a president like Gitesh Ji, and humbling me. Uh, but I think all of us, we also pay tribute to the organizer, friend of Vietnam, our mentors, and a raw, solid, secularist, democrat, socialist. And the simplicity is not that, Professor, you have been attracted, but Gitesji all along his life was attracted to the humil humbleness, simplicity, and plain living. And I think uh, he also, the personality, who made these two personalities, Gandhiji and Ho Chi Minh. Ah. So, our distinguished panelists have done justice to the topic today, both the 50th anniversary of the Indo-Vietnamese diplomatic relationship, as well as commemorating President Ho Chi Minh on the eve of his birthday as his Excellency, the Ambassador of Vietnam, Mr. Pham San Chiao, has mentioned that the beginning of this birth anniversary of Ho Chi Minh is being marked today. And as a Kolkata, as a citizen of India and Bengal, we are happy to note that the Socialist Republic of Vietnam and its embassy in India has chosen Calcutta to begin this celebration of week long celebration of birthday of Ho Chi Minh. So we are. 
we express our gratitude. And outside Vietnam, I think there is no second place than Calcutta to have such celebration. That make us proud. Uh, being uh, chairing this uh, session means I need not make a long speech, but I have to uh, appreciate the efforts put by these uh, distinguished panelists to do justice to the topic of the day. The keynote address, Telottama, much younger to me, has given us so many keys, but I'm not going to unlock those treasures. Uh, one thing is very clear. She's a scholar. And when we talk about diplomatic relationship between two countries, particularly India with Vietnam, as we don't require any third umpire in this subcontinent, yes. and we don't get the reference of any third countries to have friendship with Vietnam, it's purely on the basis of two civilization and shared anti-colonial, anti-imperialist struggle. And the great leadership like Gandhiji, Nehru, it's mentioned here, and Uncle Ho. Today, it's very pleasant for me to listen to those names, <laughs> which used to be mentioned in such discussions, and now being sought to be wiped out from the memory. Gandhi, Lenin, Ho Chi Minh, Nehru in particular. Yes. I, don't, I think uh, no as person cast. I'm so proud that the ambassador said I would have come with a Nehru court. These days we don't mention even Nehru court because of the change of the prime minister, we changed the name of the courts also. Politics <laughs> 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 apart. Uh, so, rightly pointed out by both Kusum and his Excellency the Ambassador, that Indo-Vietnamese relationship is people to people, heart to heart communication. And of course, Mr. Gautam Dei, while speaking, he mentioned that. Not going to the statistics, not going to the data, not going to the handouts of the PIBs, he mentioned and rightly quoted Amrita Pizam. Poetry are made out of passion and heart. Speeches are made out of data and information. Uh, but the similarity mentioned about Nehru and Ho Chi Minh, Bangla Mabulita Adbut Samapatan Noy, it's not just coincidence that. President Ho Chi Minh is referred as Uncle Ho, and Prime Minister Jawaharlal Nehru is mentioned as Chacha Nehru. Both used to love children, and both were loved by children. Yes. And we, are, we represent that generation who were children when we learn about Ho Chi Minh and Nehru. And we are fortunate for that. These days, children don't respect politicians. But those were the days when Children used to be motivated and they used to respect the great politicians. But I, I must mention uh, that there is no question of comparison. How much Ho Chi Minh was uh, influenced by Lenin and how much by Gandhiji. At least when we mention about Gitesh Sharma and we read his book and his studies, it's a, a syncretic, it's a composite, it's a combination. These days, through this, uh, you know, fiery television discussions, normally we put in political and diplomatic discussions versus China versus India, India versus Pakistan, Muslim versus Hindu, huh? Bengali versus non-Bengalis. Mm. Uh, this is the fashion now. But we can comprehend issues without using this football or cricket match dialogues or verses, but we can have, instead of versus, versus we can put and. And most of the time it is hyphen. That versus means a competitiveness. And when we put hyphen, it represents bridge, collaborative attitude and approach. So when we 
discuss about Ho Chi Minh and his diplomacy, we need not brand him whether he was a nationalist or not. He was a patriot. He himself in his writings mentioned that out of sheer love of his country and people first. He was drawn in politics. And because it was under the yoke of colonial rule, so he fought against the colonies, colonialists, colonialism, and studying Lenin's questions of colonialism and nationalism, the thesis on, he could make out that the Marxism or Leninism can be the guiding principle. He was not a Marxist from that. He started with the youth, revolutionary youth of Vietnam. The scholars are here. But later after visiting Europe, studying Irish revolutionary things, like in our countries also, the freedom fighters used to study, debate, discuss. Some people went for non-violent route, some people went for the violent route, but they studied what is going on across the globe. So as aspirant for freedom, as a struggling leader of independence, he opted for Marxism and Lenin's principle on the question of nationalism. But internationalism was core to his heart. And again, I'll not put nationalism versus internationalism. Only a good patriot can become an internationalist. Otherwise, there will be fake nationalist or fake patriot. If you love your country, need not be you have to hate other countries. It's out of love and passion. And that's why when he was fighting against French colonial rulers, like Gandhiji, when Gandhiji also mentioned that, he was against British rule, not the Britishers. So Ho Chi Minh was also fighting against the French colonialism, colonial rulers. Not the French. He became French member of the founding members of the French Communist Party, and that is internationalism. Otherwise, he would have hated of these days. We are our next generations are being taught that if you want to love your country, you have to hate some others. Mm -hmm. And that's the beauty of that generation. And that's why when Nehruji was in British jail and he was languishing in Chinese China. Chinese jail, Japanese occupation, yeah. they exchanged th their thoughts, they wrote. So the love for freedom, independence, and love for the people, that brought them together. Their love for their own countries. But loving their own countries, they, they made more, both of them became internationalist. And after becoming the uh, president or prime minister of respective countries, uh, they continued with that. That's a non alignment movement came. That's how uh, the world became closer. And Ho Chi Minh always used to mention Asia and Africa. Yes. That's the, the that you look beyond. beyond. You transcend it. The geographical boundaries. I'm sorry, I uh, have gone to certain other parts, but I'm so grateful to you, sir. Uh, your seventh, my comrade that uh, Ho Chi Minh is very dear to not only our generation, our earlier generation, our next generation also. As you know, other, normally other politicians are being uh, you know, criticized. But why and how? The struggle, our generations came to politics knowing that, yes, the mighty US imperialists can be taken care of by the people of Vietnam with so much of resources. That's the leadership. That's the diplomacy, that the ideology, which, and the people-centric politics, they could mobilize yes. all sections, not only youths, women, the, the, the uh, poorest of the poor, and he's still, we endure, because when he visited as head of the state, but he was quite at home with the most backward section, so-called backward section, of poor section, no elitism. So, being a diplomat, if you are with this attire, that's, you don't mind. But that is the beauty of womanhood, women. 
I appreciate when I visited thrice Vietnam, particularly Hanoi, as youth leader, as uh, the coordinator of the Asia Pacific region for the youth movement, uh, World Affairs of the Republic of Europe, thrice I took you to Hanoi. But the women of Vietnam, they still love in the formal dress is their national attire. Here also we found those are from. Uh, but in male folk, because of this so much of diplomatic and formal and other things, uh, we, we, we change our attire so frequently. But Bengalis are still, they love their saris, <laughs> and the Vietnamese, their own traditional outfits, particularly the women. They, they, they carry on that tradition. So, huh? Outside. 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 Yes. Outside. Not housewife. Outside. 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 Recall that name. No, no, no. That I have. Yes. 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 Chappal made of recycled tires. Mm. Now Vietnam is also going for all western brand, no problem, <laughs> it's a development. But this is a picture. Uh, traditional, isn't it? Yeah, that is ah, a traditional. Ah, that's a yeah. 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 That's recycled chappal made of recycled tires. Now we don't know how to dispose of all these plastics. <laughs> yes. That is simplicity. That's the beauty. But these days we have tires made of you know best designers of the world. Again, I don't know, no comment to anyone that even chappals are made branded. <laughs> okay. So this I am grateful to uh, Gitesh ji. He took pain, researched, and put together from Calcutta publications of those days when solidarity movement was there. Yes. Street of Calcutta was buzzing. Tomannam Vietnam. Even he could identify how that slogan originated and from where. He told me once. <coughs> that research work took to the root. <laughs> Today when Umar Jindinwala, the Cheta personality here present here, uh, with our, after we uh, uh, got this Bad. So I said, I upload the Nam to the Why don't you put your name? I said, I am in Indo Vietnam Solidarity Program. Uh, so, what the use of, you, you remember, what the use of putting my name? So, one now, one now, Vietnam, Vietnam, only one name is there. And that's why I said, we, we now we are in a family. And that is what we communicate heart to heart. Uh, the other things also, I have not spoken of my thing, but at least we try to strengthen our bilateral relation, government to government, as well as people to people. And this relationship cannot be bypassing Calcutta. That's true. Because I'm not going to deal with the past, even dealing with future. Even our government of India used to say earlier, locust. Even new prime minister told, act east. But those are dialects. How far we are looking east and how far we are looking west from our universities, from our research centers, from our ICCR things, we can find out. But there is a need. Yes. And the, 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 the Western interest being a Calcutta is that if you want to look east, you have to look from Calcutta. Yes. That is, Calcutta used to be once called the London of the East, and Shanghai used to be mentioned as the Calcutta of the East, <coughs> till the beginning of last century. We don't go to this revivalist thing, we can't. But unless we change our history and golden tradition and study that, we cannot build a future. Because the root of the future is like, and the challenge, greatest challenge at this present moment is that the history is sought to be wiped out. Like in your mobile you have memory chips and that memory chips of the civilization is being 
short to be deleted. So if we want to preserve and protect our civilizational values and this friendship, we have to cherish that history. And that is why we are grateful to Gide Sarmaji, not only for this Indo-Vietnamese Solidarity Committee, but he studied, he imbibed these values, and that's why we are all here. And we must continue to meet, not only on this occasion when Ambassador comes, even then, but we have to uh, build a future based on the top, solid foundation of this friendship. You mentioned about unshakable yes. putting Ho Chi Minh. Yes. So it is rock solid. Yes. Government may come, government may go, but people of India and people of Vietnam will remain and the French The anti imperialist solidarity. The friendship, the basis of friendship of India Vietnam is that struggle, the glorious struggle of Vietnamese people, the sufferings and this indomitable spirit. Which can, which can take on the mightiest force and that give a culture. It's not only a culture of revolution, it's a culture of resistance, not surrendering. And when this spirit comes, it's immaterial to discuss whether it's violence or non-violence. Revolutionary does not mean violent peoples. Ho Chi Minh was a revolutionary. Gandhiji was also revolutionized the policy. Whether you are you remain a violent or non-violent, that depends on the situation and the force you are fighting with. Yes. To quote Ho Chi Minh also, he was always, peace was dear to him. He sought to negotiate even after October 45, September 46, he wrote French authorities, you want peace, peaceful solution, peaceful negotiation. But the other way, the colonialists, the imperialists will never allow us to live in peace. Even now you can see it. So, if you are... Yes. War is thrust, thrust upon you. You need not be a pacifist. You have to wage a war to stop that war. And that is what Vietnam has shown. And even those veterans of US soldiers who went and bombed Vietnam, now their next generation, they go and pay tribute to not only their forefathers, but those who came the struggle and the people of Vietnam. And that is the spirit. So I think after freedom also, after the uh, removal of the uh, victory over the colonial rulers, Tremendous progress Vietnam has made. It's national reconciliation, national reconstruction, starting with reunification, and they've struggled for that. And now in the Committee of Nation, Vietnamese are a proud member. Even during COVID situation, first wave, they've managed excellently. The social media in Bengal and Calcutta particularly was buzzed with your uh, uh, rice ATM. When we were here uh, establishing some cheap canteen, some free distribution of foods and rations, uh, compelling government of India and government of state government to provide some relief to the uh, those, those who have lost their uh, jobs. And we have seen, and that sparked that this is how our pro-people administration can serve to its people. So even now, this Delta variant also is being successfully fought and next door to China. That's too much that we are done. And we need peaceful Asia, peaceful South Asia, peaceful Indian Ocean. And now this Indo-Pacific is being coined so that showing that India is much larger than is larger than uh, the size, uh, but this Indian Ocean or Pacific. We want free from imperialist presence. We can negotiate, we can deal with, we don't want another Ukraine war in the land of Asia. No NATO, no Western power is going to help us. They sometimes, again referring to Ho Chi Minh and Gideon Sarmad understanding, 
that they, sometimes they make fake enemies. And these days, it, media is so strong. Are so strong. And they create an atmosphere when the people who are supposed to be friendly, they make ourselves fight each other. And that's why you have to again read the question of colonialism and nationalities as Ho Chi Minh read, and still Lenin is relevant. When we remember Nehru, we also mentioned that how Ho Chi, the name, this Hungerford Street name was renamed, requestioned as Ho Chi Minh Sarani. Harrington Street. Ho Chi Minh, Harrington Street. Ho Chi Minh, and Jyoti Basu once mentioned that this is the sweet revenge we have taken from US for, uh, against these US forces, that when Calcutta Municipal Corporation, the then led by the left, uh, mentioned that, uh, changed that name. So US Embassy is there. Five Ho Chi Minh Sarani. So they said, whenever you communicate with your masters in Washington, <laughs> you have to mention Ho Chi Minh. Without mentioning Ho Chi Minh, those days, email were not there, so only post bags used to be there. So the, the, you can't the, 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 the send your reports. That is how. But now something is being sought to be reversed in this state also. In Durgapur, I found that lady names will be stri uh, out from, struck out from this road name in Durgapur, and it will be in some other Lata Mangeshkar the name. So don't put Lata Mangeshkar versus lady. If we want to rename something, we can create some new roads and new yes. buildings yes. instead yes. of renaming. That's the legacy we have to continue with. These words, thank you. And uh, thanks you again for participation and patiently listening to all these rubbish. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. He, this, this, this presidential address is the heart of the seminar. We laughed, we got emotional, and we got enriched uh, with knowledge. Uh, thank you very much. And um, now let me brief the total presentation of today's seminar. The seminar, uh, Mr. Kus Ms. Kusum Jain uh, presented a welcome address. And uh, in her suggestion, she made two valid points. She said about um, that open the Ho Chi Minh chair in any university in Calcutta for the spread of Vietnamese literature and language. And also she talked about uh, the cr trade and cultural office uh, in Calcutta. And obviously she is traced upon that should be run by any Vietnamese person. And <coughs> in, in the inaugural address, Honorable Ambassador, Mr. Pham San Chau expressed his pleasure of seeing the familiar faces of our extended family. And the fact that National Library is a venue that stands for intellectualism is a great point to hold this seminar, he talked that. And he thanked the government for their supporting hand for opening Vietnam Corner in National Library. Mentioning about Ho Chi Minh's three times visit to India, he talked about the humble behavior, the humble personality of Uncle Ho. He said that India and Vietnam's relationship is not economic, not like the buyers and sellers. It's about people to people and heart to heart. Um, he said we have a, an age-old relationship. 2,600 years ago, we had a trade and business and commercial relationship. Buddhism, yoga, Indian diaspora, Indian culture, traditional medicine, uh, other soft powers and other similarities that have brought us together. To tell the next point of our closeness, it said it is closeness between Ho Chi Minh with Mahatma Gandhi and Nehru that has laid the foundation of our relationship. Next, presenting the keynote address, Dr. Tilotama Mukherjee uh, gave a broad overview of India's relation with Vietnam during the Cold War years and the excellent relations and fraternal tides said by Prime Minister Nehru and President Ho Chi Minh. She also discussed India's support for the cause of Vietnam and its reunification and reconstruction during Mrs. Indira Gandhi's tenure. She discussed in detail the most, the most important recent developments from 2016 to 2021 between India and Vietnam in the political, strategic, economic, 
people-to-people -people contacts and ends by pining the hope on these two countries for bringing a prosperous Indo-Pacific in the coming decades. Next, uh, Professor Tridib Chakraborty, in his address, mentioned Ho Chi Minh as a greatest revolutionary figure of the century. He was next to Lenin, a conscious environmentalist. To talk about India-Vietnam relationship, he said that we supported each other during the period of our struggle for independence. For Ho, I mean Ho Chi Minh, Gandhi was his political guru. In the sad demise of Gandhi, Uncle Ho said it's not a national disaster, but an international loss. He mentioned about the cordial relationship between the common people of our two countries. Referring M. N. Roy's book, The Men I Met, he said the praising words written by the writer about Uncle Ho in that book. Vietnam's movement was a nationalist movement under the leadership of a communist. He was half Lenin and half Gandhi. India played a very important role for the national reconstruction of Vietnam. Next, uh, to talk about um, the address of Mr. Gautam Day in his speech, he, uh, remembering the president of our Indo-Vietnam Solidarity Committee, Mr. Gitesh Sharma, he said that during this hour of tens, we should follow the ideas and ideals of Ho Chi Minh the most. Lenin was a revolutionary leader, Gandhi adopted nonviolence, but Uncle Ho followed some qualities of both the leaders. So Ho Chi Minh is very much relevant today. He concluded his address with uh, reciting the poem by Amrita uh, on Uncle Ho. He also mentioned about one scholarship for Indian students to study Uncle Ho's ideas or about Vietnamese literature in Vietnam. Next to talk about the address of Mr. Amitabh Chakraborty in his address, uh, he said um, Uncle Ho as a sent politician. He remember his youth when he went through the biography of Uncle Ho and greatly motivated by it. He mentioned about the struggle of Ho Chi Minh to liberate his country along with his, its unification. He appreciated the war strategies of Ho Chi Minh, like treating the captured American soldiers with humanity, with humanity to have conversation with them and change their mind. And to talk about the presidential address by uh, Mohammed Salim, um, Paying tribute to late Gitesh Sharma, Mr. Salim expressed his gratitude to spot, uh, um, uh, his gratitude to the embassy for spotting Calcutta to celebrate the 50th anniversary of the diplomatic relationship between India and Vietnam and to celebrate the 132nd birth anniversary of President Ho Chi Minh. India and Vietnam relationship doesn't need any third party. It's based uh, purely on the basis of our civilization. He remembered the great history when children used to appreciate politicians and they were the role models. He talked about collaborative approach of um, um, the political parties, but not of, he, he talked about collaborative approach of the national political parties, uh, not, not only of the national political parties, but of the nations. Only a true patriot could become a nationalist, and that was Ho Chi Minh. One doesn't need to hate other countries to show their love for their own country. He mentioned that Ho Chi Minh's importance uh, was there in the past, is here in the present, and will be there in the future for our generation. He focused on strengthening our bilateral relationship, and Kolkata can play a great role in this aspect. He talked about a world of free from imperialist forces. That's a uh, brief of today's session. And um, now I would like to request Mr. Prem Kapoor to present a formal vote of thanks. Uh, thank you, Prabha. Uh, Mr. Chairman, Sir, Mohammed Salim, Your Excellency, Mr. Pham San Chau, and friends. Uh, three of our distinguished speakers this morning spoke about three visits of President Ho Chi Minh to India. I would like to point out an interesting point. Two of the visits of President Ho Chi Minh in 1946 and 1958 were on record. But the third visit, we don't find on record. That was disclosed by Uncle Ho himself in 1958 when in a, in a public meeting that he had arrived at Calcutta port in, the 19, in 1911 
under the disguise of a cook. He was disguised as a cook. <laughs> yes, he, he, in, in a Calcutta port. That was one point. Uh, yes, 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 yes. Gupta family in Saigon Yes, 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 yes. Very true. Very true. Come out of That Gupta that Gupta family that that mention is there in the documentary also. Uh, yes, 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 yes. Uh, another point I want I want to make uh, not point. I, 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 may like, I may like to add only uh, one quotation from Gitesh Sharmaji's book that, that sums up this seminar this, uh, this morning. Uh, the book is Ho Chi Minh and India by Gitesh Sharma. I, I like to read a few lines. In comparison to great men of the modern times, the ideas and policies of Ho Chi Minh are far more perceptible in the interests of the people. Of course, these should not be blindly emulated. Uh, Gautam Da had raised a point whether we should emulate Ho Chi Minh's ideas and policies in our, our daily life or our politics. So here is the answer is, of course, these should not be blindly emulated and should be implemented only after a careful study. One may learn a lot from Ho Chi Minh's experience to accomplish the goal of independence, progress, and peace. Uh, now, I have been asked to propose a vote of thanks, a very pleasant duty that I have been bestowed with. Uh, first of all, I would like to offer my sincere gratitude and thanks to the chairman of this morning's function, Muhammad Salim. <laughs> you all might be knowing that there is a very big function of the democratic uh, DFY uh, is, is, is currently in session. And despite his busyness, he managed to accommodate our program and he, he is present here. Uh, we have no words to thank you, sir. I am also thankful to His Excellency Mr. Farm San Chow, uh, who has come all the way from Delhi to address us this morning. I am also thankful to Dr. Do Than Hai, Deputy Chief of the Mission, and his, and his colleagues from the Embassy. I am also thankful to Mr. Huang Tung, Consul General of Vietnam in Bombay, for kindly making it convenient to be present here. It's a great honor to us, sir, that you have come all the way from Bombay. Uh, my thanks are also due to Dr. Tilottama Mukherjee for her well-researched paper. It's, it, it really was a key paper, keynote address, and uh, Salim Saab very, very, very rightly said that he had no key to unlock <laughs> the key address. <laughs> My thanks are also due to Professor Tridip Chakravarti. I would also like to thank Gautam Dev, who has always stood by us uh, whenever we have asked him. He is always uh, a second man to us after Gitesi. He has always supported us and uh, extended, extended his hearty, uh, what you call, uh, we, we may say it, cooperation. It's wonderful. And uh, we are r very thankful to you, sir, for being on the receiving end. My thanks are also due to Mr. Amitava Chakravarti, Arvind Kohri, Bimal Sharma, Ashok Verma, Aarti Singh, Mahila Kavya Manch, Sahityaki, Ravel Pushp for their indispensable 
Raj Mitholia for their indispensable support and cooperation in making all the arrangements this morning. I am thankful to Mr. Anshuman of the National Library and other staff members of the library for their kind help. I would be failing in my duty if I don't thank the media for their support. And, and lastly, but not the least, I must thank I must thank all of you, ladies and gentlemen, for making yourself available this morning, this morning at this uh, venue, and and being a part of this seminar. You have sincerely made this seminar a grand success, and I thank you once again, all of you. Uh, sorry. Sorry, uh, I I forgot to I forgot to mention the name of one of the most uh, <laughs> deserving person. Who, who she 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 uh, I would name Dr. Prabhamai Samantarai. She is the most committed and dedicated member of our society. She is the secretary. She is one of the secretary generals, and uh, she was. Uh, the anchor of this morning's function. My thanks are also due to her. And once again, I thank you all. Can she come all the way from Odisha? Yeah. Yes. Yesterday, tomorrow she will leave for this. This is my duty because. and responsibility. To and from the chair, I thank you. <laughs> and true to her name, she remained Prabhamai during the whole period. <laughs>
you must reach this hotel this time. So I reached there and uh, we met, we discussed and uh, it was a very nice interaction. And uh, today I can't, you know, he wanted me to come to this place so many times. But yes. A lot of times we fixed up a time but uh, it's actually on the way, uh, you know, it's very near to my office. But somehow, and that's also very near to my constituency. But somehow, uh, you know, God had other designs. And today, in His absence, I am here. So, so you forgive me for not coming earlier. But, as I Hindi, I think it's a wonderful office. I think it does wonderful work. And uh, I think the real tribute that we can pay Gitesh and to Indo Vietnam friendship is to actually do our bit by whatever uh, I have personally visited Vietnam. All those of you who haven't got to have visited Vietnam, my request will be to go. It's a great country and there is ample things for everybody. I had, uh, had uh, you know, my trip itinerary was actually guided because of a discussion with him. So he says, you have to go to Halong Bay, you have to go to this place, you have to go to that place. So, uh, you know, and once again, uh, I think uh, with you coming in, the boost to Bengal, Vietnam, India, Vietnam, all the ties, further trade, commerce, culture, let all things blossom, let all things take place. Uh, and our team here, we hope that the hospitality that Musumji and her team are giving is adequate. If not, we, we will make it better and better. And, and uh, we hope to see you more frequently. We hope that you come, keep coming back soon. And the flight that you started, you use it maximum times. Thank you. And all of you from uh, those who are coming from Vietnam or from the Delhi, most welcome. And we'll keep in touch. We will be hope that this is a new chapter and the foundation that Gitaji has built, we only build higher on that foundation. Namaskar. Thank you. Yes, yes, yes. Guru Samanthe, Siamko Bhutu Sidney Gumila on se, or Ajam Parsa to Bane, Uniga Dim Sibane. Uh, uh, and we become the counselor because this inspiration and motivation. We want to know that Vietnam is always connected to this place. Because in the name of Vietnam, we are so much love for Vietnam. We don't know about Vietnam. We don't know about Vietnam. We don't know about Vietnam. But we are not aware of Vietnam. 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 That's why we are making it for Gitaji. He said that he was unaware of Vietnam. He said that he was unaware of Vietnam. He met Gitaji and he explained to him about Vietnam and its development. He brought the Gitaji and he brought an appreciation and admiration for the Vietnam and its Vietnam. And he wants to keep our association with Gitaji.
that is become a thing. You should call, you should ask in this course. If there is a criteria, you should ask in this course to describe it as the spiritual and moral heritage of humanity. <laughs> yes. Yes, because because we have a cultural heritage, we have natural heritage. If, uh, this morning you are at the library, we have documentary heritage. We have uh, all the big religions, spiritual heritage, but moral, moral heritage, friendly heritage like yes. this, it is the symbol. Yes. So first and foremost, I thank you very much for the love you reserve. I see that that love is running in our job life. For the old people, like for all the people, like some of you, going down to the children, the small baby this morning, and it go, it going across to the dancer, the singer, the poet, the journalist, to the businessman, <laughs> or going through the uh, politicians, like Mr. Bullim today, like uh, uh, Mr. Uh, the gentleman just there, like uh, you. So it, it, it's, it's there everywhere. Every corner of Kolkata, every part of the Kolkata people. That is, I think, as I uh, stated in my speech this morning, nowhere other than Kolkata do we have that feeling. Nowhere other than Kolkata do we feel like home. This is truly the home for all the This is the truly for the family. So, coming back, that is the strength of our bilateral relations. It lies and depend not only on economic and commercial, not only on defense, on political and defense, cooperation, not only uh, depends on scientific collaboration, but basically on the people to people, <coughs> on the people to people part, the people and people cooperation. But at the end of the day, all these exchanges, all these cooperation need to serve the people of our country. And at the end of the day, that friendship need to satisfy the emotional desire of our both sides. When we were in difficulties, that emotion, that, that feeling were there. Now, there's no reason for that feeling, for that emotion to go away when we are better off. With that, once again, I thank you all for warmly all coming to us, coming from different uh, parts. This time, I take a lot with me, my uh, concert channel from Mumbai and this Yes, I also take the, uh, all the three better half of the three leaders. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah.